world-renowned experts in the field in which they write. Uh, the majority are from the U.S., but increasingly we have authors from Europe and really all around the world. And if you were to do a search of who knows the most about that particular topic, uh, our authors would always be uh, at or very near to the top. So this is a truly authoritative work by world experts. And I would say even more now in current times, when you can look on the web and find almost anything, but have no idea whether it's true or not. The real virtue of our book is that you know it's true. It's not fake news. It is uh, the best information you can get. And that's what makes the book so special. Uh, edition has, has new chapters. The, uh, the major uh, new chapters in the current edition uh, on the uh, electronic version uh, <coughs> to which uh, people have access is a chapter on coronavirus. Uh, we call it the uh, post-2019 coronavirus. Uh, and uh, that chapter, like the electronic book to which people have access if they buy the printed book, is continuously updated. So our book is a living text, the print book, but also the electronic book being continuously updated. And I would say, if we go to the more recent editions, the 26th edition, the forthcoming 27th edition, that's what's really been the, the major change. The ability to update the book uh, consistently on the electronic version so that it's always uh, current never behind. Videos, uh, echocardiograms, for example, endoscopies are another good example, but also we have links to the references. So Golden Cecil has two kinds of references. Uh, one are what we call grade A references. They are randomized trials or meta-analyses of randomized trials. So indisputable, firm evidence to back up uh, what our authors recommend. And in the electronic version, you can click on that, and get right to the article if you wish. We also have review articles. Uh, there are regular references and uh, they are accessible as well. So Goldman Cecil is really not only a terrific book in its own, but also the way it links uh, to these other uh, sources uh, and as part of you know, the broader clinical key product of Elsevier. One of the, the key issues of uh, Golden Cecil is that uh, the information is presented in a clear and logical way. So for every key disease, we start off with the epidemiology, pathobiology, clinical manifestations, diagnosis, treatment, prevention and prognosis. And the treatment sections are very clear. We have lots of algorithms that can tell you exactly what to do in different circumstances. So the concept here is that there's lots of information or lots and lots of conditions. But when you go in and want to find what to do for some particular problem, it's clear, it's precise and easy to follow. And we mentioned a drug, we tell you the drug name, the dose, how long to use it for. So uh, in that regard, the book is encyclopedic and comprehensive, but also very practical and useful. Uh, I do the editing. So what you see has passed my personal review, if you will, uh, looking to be sure that it's clear, it's precise, it's easy to use. And I use myself as sort of the generalist. Uh, I've got to be able to understand it. Our authors are experts. We want to make sure that their expertise is expressed and written in a way that a generalist physician can follow and use. And that's one of the great things about the book. It's really the expert and what they uh, recommend, but then styled in a way that is usable and uh, user-friendly.
it really is an extraordinary effort. Uh, we have a, a co-editor for me for each edition. That person has varied over the years that I've been doing the book. Uh, for this 26th edition, it was my good friend, Andy Schaefer, who's a hematologist oncologist. Uh, for the next edition, uh, the, the 27th edition will be uh, Kathleen Cooney, uh, who is uh, an oncologist at Duke and chair of the Department of Medicine there. Uh, the associate editors uh, were a wide range of very diverse people, a number of women uh, co-editors. They choose the authors and we vet the authors. Our authors are almost all full professors, or if not, they're well on their way to becoming a full professor. Uh, they don't have junior people who write the article for them and they sort of kind of only look at it. They write the chapter. Uh, so we have this enormous uh, roster, if you will, of people. Uh, over 400 chapters, many have two authors, so we're the roughly 650, 700 different authors. I think the authors really take great pride in being part of the book and part of the, uh, the Cecil team. And I communicate uh, with many of them, and it's striking how many grew up with the book, remember reading the book, you know, given the book as a graduation present, and they take great pride in being part of this book and part of the family. So I think this uh, really is a remarkable team effort. The, the paper edition can only be done periodically. So typically we do the paper edition every four years. Uh, we take great pride in it. I've got the, right here on my desk, here's the 26th edition. Uh, but uh, books are harder and harder to carry around. In some settings where it's easy to access a book, there are times when the digital product is much uh, more practical. And that's why we have it. But even more importantly, we can update it. So uh, I personally do updates at least uh, four times a year to the book. Uh, every chapter is updated uh, at least once a year. And that electronic version gives us what I'll call the living book. Uh, the printed book is, is, we think, terrific. But you can only print the book so often. And uh, it's not a practical means for the kind of important updates that we do. But, uh, each year we add uh, thousands of new references. Uh, we add new information, as I said, literally to every chapter. Um, I think for me, as for most people, the professional career is a little bit of planning and a lot of a lot of luck. Um, I was asked to become one of the co-editors of Cecil uh, seven editions ago. Uh, it came as a total surprise. I found that I enjoyed it and uh, it's become a critical part now of me and my professional life. Some people said it's sort of like being a curator in a museum, only we're not dealing with old stuff, we're dealing with new stuff. So in a museum, a curator takes good care of and displays art. Uh, even if it's relatively modern art, it's not from yesterday. It's things that have been determined to be important and worth showing. Uh, in many ways, I'm a curator of new and evolving information, uh, trying to help doctors every day know what's important and what's less important. A big part of my job is to work with the authors to be sure that information is put in the proper perspective some new treatment comes along. Is it the best thing since sliced bread or is it too early to know for sure exactly when to use it? Uh, what are the uh, best approaches uh, to a patient today? So I, I take uh, great satisfaction being part of this. Not something I planned, but it's a real privilege for me uh, to be the editor of this book and have my name on it. behind our book is that uh, you no longer think of it as a textbook. A textbook is something you use when you're in school and you read it once and you never really go back to it except when you're maybe looking like an encyclopedia. Uh, this, is, this is different. This is a living 
entity, continuously updated, uh, made for practical use. So I, I think our readers value the encyclopedic authoritative nature of the book on the one hand, what they really want is something they can use on a regular basis. So we're glad this is on someone's shelf, but even more, we see it on someone's desk because they're using it on a regular basis, not just sticking it up on the shelf for show. It's a living product that they're using on a regular basis. And uh, we feel very confident that people who use Cecil regularly uh, will be well-versed in all things that they're uh, responsible for and it makes them a better doctor. From the German, uh, and I can't really speak German, but it's something like Immersion Medizin, which in German uh, meant scientific medicine. So the, the birth of internal medicine really is in Germany in the 19th century, when doctors and scientists begin to realize that the key to taking care of patients is not just the symptom, what the patient says they have, or the sign that you see, but what's causing it. Because the same symptom or sign could be caused by multiple different things. I use as an example, back in the 19th century, there was a condition called the dropsy. The dropsy. The dropsy meant your ankles were swollen. Well, your ankles can be swollen for lots of different reasons. It can be heart failure. It can be right-sided heart failure from lung disease. It can be kidney disease with glomerulonephritis and nephrotic syndrome. It can be liver disease. It can be venous disease. All sorts of things can cause the dropsy. You really can't treat someone with the dropsy unless you know what's causing it. <clears throat> the whole concept behind internal medicine was Let's find the root cause. Let's understand the biology, the pathobiology of what's going on. And so even today, that's why our chapters have that section on pathobiology. Not because we're trying to teach people all the science and gory detail, but because an understanding of what's going wrong physiologically, pathologically, is critical to understanding why the patient has the signs or symptoms, how to make the diagnosis, and how to treat it. And that's what makes this book different than, say, a cookbook of uh, how to treat something. We have all that in here, but we also give you in a concise, hopefully very clear way, an understanding of the underlying uh, processes that are so critical, and without which understanding you uh, really can't take the best care of patients. It'll make you better. It'll tell you the truth. It'll cut through all the chaff and give you the wheat. Uh, that's what it's all about.